I got some pushback in the comments on my video yesterday, but taking a look at AMD's fluid motion frames. First of all, I think some people thought I was talking about FSR3, and I wasn't, and the title of the video was literally, this is not FSR3, it's better but also worse. It's better because you can toggle it through the driver in literally any DX11 or DX12 game. It's worse because its quality is literally worse. Its quality and functionality is literally worse. And that's where I, I was also getting some pushback and said that the game I was using to demo it, which yesterday was Cyberpunk, uh, was not a good um, a, a good demo of the technology and wasn't on AMD's list of supported games. Now, to be clear, it was specifically mentioned in the driver and did say that you could use it on any DX11 or DX12 game like and then specifically listed Cyberpunk. However, there are some other games like Jedi Survivor that have it as more of a part of a hyper-tuning profile and also include AMD's Anti-Lag Plus, which can help reduce input latency because generating frames does increase input latency. So we're going to take a look at this in Jedi Survivor. For one thing, because it has Anti-Leg Plus, it's on that list of games, but also this is a third-person game, not a first-person shooter, which will change how we interact with this, and I think it will work better here, but it's still not perfect. But anyway, I've kicked on fluid motion frames, and you'll notice that my frame rate is now in the 140s. If I go ahead and kick that back off, you'll notice that my frame rate will be uh, closer to 80, right? So it's almost doubling my frame rate. It does take a bit of a hit, and um, uh, I think on the base frame rate for processing and then doubles it. This is frame interpolation. So again, also take a look at, by the way, only AMD's driver software overlay currently uh, reports these frame rates correctly. That's why I'm using this here. But it also gives us the system lag, which is available in, in any game with uh, anti-lag plus, but that's currently only available in AMD's 7000 series GPUs. But again, if I kick on fluid motion frames one more time, we're going to say that this also in adds in frame gen lag. And here it's showing about 23 milliseconds. So if you add the system lag to the frame gen lag, and then whatever uh, latency is inherent to your monitor and mouse and keyboard inputs and all of that, you would get your total system you know, responsiveness lag. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and look at this. So one thing is, yes, this does have some image quality issues. Notice the right stick symbol um, on this little targeting thing. And notice as I pan back and forth, it kind of garbles, right? Same with some of the, other, the blue lines around it and things like that. There's some garbling on that UI. If this was an actual um, FSR3 implementation, it could be more UI aware and not have uh, so much issues with that type of thing. But again, this is applied through the, the driver level. So that's certainly a place that we can see this. Another place we see this is if I'm like flipping through graphic settings. Uh, notice as I pan down here, do you guys see the garbling of the, the yellow bar? Or I don't know if it's yellow, but the, 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 the bars around, the, the highlighting bars, right? You see what I'm saying though? It kind of garbles in the menu. Again, in a good implementation of something like FSR3, uh, there's ways to make the game's UI more separated out from the upscaling process. So this is what I mean by, you know, it's, this is not as good of an interpolation as, as FSR3. However, I will say that my biggest criticism in Cyberpunk was that on a fast camera motion, uh, it just turns itself off. Now, Here's the thing, in a game like Jedi Survivor, I'm much more likely to be running in a straight line with only slower camera motions. So if you actually watch my frame time graph, we're not gonna get nearly as much of the dips all the way down to the base frame rate, which I was getting constantly in Cyberpunk. I think we had it right there, it dipped down to about 80, and then, and then went right back up. And I'm gonna try to just do fairly normal gameplay as if I was just kind of running through this area. You saw it drop down to about 80 there again for a second. So also in the Cyberpunk video, where I will say I think I was a bit wrong, was I said it happens on fast mouse uh, inputs or I, then I tested out on a controller and also noticed fast camera pans did it. I think what it's really detecting is just the difference between frames and it can just intelligently, I think we dipped down to the 80s there again. Um, it can just intelligently sense if there's too big of a difference between two frames for it to do a good job of interpolating. And then their solution 
is to turn that off, um, to turn the interpolation off to not get really garbled, um, uh, really garbled looking uh, images. Now, because of that, the higher your base frame rate, the less likely it will need uh, it will be to need to do that, um, because it has a uh, you know this a smaller difference between frames. The higher your base frame rate is, but as we saw here, when I was actually in combat, it was getting frames that that caused it to dip down into the 80s. Um, if we want to test it out just on like camera panning motion, uh, remember my base frame rate being you know 80ish right now. A smooth pan like this is maintaining the frame interpolation. I'm going to go up a little bit quicker. It's still maintaining my frame, in frame interpolation. You see the, fr the frame, frame rate is still high. And then right about there, we're, we're dipping now. Now you can see it's dropping down to the base frame rate, which I guess is about 71 in that particular camera panning situation. OK, so we can see that in typical gameplay, in a third-person game like this, it's not going to be turning off constantly the way it was in a first-person game like Cyberpunk. But again, it also depends on the base frame rate. And it's true that when I was running around the city in, in Cyberpunk, the base frame rate is incredibly variable and often was lower than what this was uh, wanting. Now, uh, let's take a look at how, how it performs when my base pr frame rate is worse. So I'm going to turn off FSR2 quality which is going to make my base frame rate worse. Let's turn off the frame interpolation for a second. So turning off uh, fluid motion frames. And you can see that my base frame rate now is about 52 frames per second. By the way, notice on a camera pan here, the right stick button and things like that don't, uh, don't garble. Uh, there's a little bit of ghosting on some of the, uh, the uh, right hand side of the image, but I think that's more of a like a in speed motion blur type of effect. However, uh, what we're going to look at next is, OK, what if I do now kick on frame interpolation from the uh, base frame rate closer to 50 frames per second and then take a look at this similar situation? You can see that here it's garbling quite a bit. And it is important to note that we are below the recommended base frame rate for using this, right? They said at 1440p or higher, you would want um, at least a base frame rate of 60. And you can see that it's garbling all over the place uh, on the, uh, the right stick um, you know, thing as, as well as other stuff. Uh, let's also take a look at this uh, more kind of running around and, and see how that goes. I think I've already killed the enemies, so we're not going to be able to do that, that element of it. But you can see when the frame rate is around 90 uh, or 100, it is still enabling the interpolation. But right there, we dropped down to about 60. So it was turning it off because uh, there was a bit of a quick camera pan. And um, again, I think if you watch the like hand motions quickly and things like that, again, this will not pick up correctly in a YouTube video because, again, you can't capture uh, 60 frames. You know, The YouTube video is, is locked 60 frames per second. And I'm experiencing a variable and much higher frame rate uh, thing on my actual screen. But again, that's the nature of YouTube videos. Uh, so you can see here that it does mostly stay on. And when we don't have the UI elements, it doesn't look awful or anything like that. I think if we had the combat here, we might get it um, disabling a little bit more. Um, let's bring out the lightsaber and stuff, even though there's no enemies on the screen. Uh, here you can see that it actually fighting like this with the lightsaber swinging around. Uh, do you guys see that the frame rate now is in the 60s? So it's choosing to keep the frame interpolation off uh, during this combat because the, um, again, I think there's too much motion in between frames. So I'm curious if we go back to a higher base frame rate by enabling uh, FSR. And again, this is not that it has to be FSR. It's just that this is enabling a higher base frame rate. I'm curious if now swinging the lightsaber around is going to uh, keep the frame generation active. Um, looks like it's disabling every now and then. I did see, yeah, here we're dipping down into the 70s and 80s again a little bit, but then it's popping back on. Um, so I guess. My main conclusion out of this, because again, it's, it's, if you're watching that frame rate number, it does kind of dip. And again, if you camera pan while swinging the lightsaber, uh, I do think we get a little more dips on it. But it does maintain a lot of the time. So 
yeah, my main conclusion in the last video was that this is a cool technology, and I would really like to see it uh, improve, and I'm glad that it's, it's a thing, um, especially if it does improve. But again, my main concern was just that it disables itself at the times when smoothing out the motion would be most useful, because that's kind of the thing, is that when you're standing still, or there's not a lot of difference between frames, a higher frame rate is less necessary for a good image quality, right? Um, so if the time when you most want a, to smooth out the motion is when you're on a fast camera pan or there's a lot happening on screen, that's when you'd most benefit from a higher frame rate. Uh, but that's also when this technology is most likely to um, turn off <laughs> or garble the input. And I guess it's kind of a choice between the two that the technology is uh, having to make a little bit. Anyway, I will say that in Jedi Survivor, I'm much more impressed by the technology in that it maintains itself being on a lot more of the time. Also, uh, because we have the um, anti-lag plus, the responsiveness does feel pretty good. Um, and I think that there's other games where, again, if there's not as much fast motion on screen, where this might work even better. Some people have also suggested old games that are locked to 60 FPS caps that you can't turn off. Um, maybe this would be useful there, and maybe that's something I could test out in the future. Um, but anyway, for now, I think this is, this is certainly interesting, but it's also uh, still, I think, of somewhat limited usefulness in that, you know, we do get some garbling on the screen. And if I have to have a high base frame rate anyway, then like, um, I could just enjoy the high base frame rate. Whereas with FSR 3, I'm much more likely to keep that on because it has less of the issues. Again, we're talking about fluid motion frames and this is still a tech preview. Um, also, since we're here, maybe we could try out the difference with Anti-Lag Plus. So right now we're seeing with Anti-Lag Plus on, our system lag is around 29 milliseconds. If I disable that and leave on normal Anti-Lag, oh, I guess with Anti-Lag Plus, um, you, uh, I guess it, you can only see the system lag when that's enabled. I think they had some kind of hotkey for disabling that, but I can't remember what it was. Was it right control? Yeah, it's right control. Okay, if I hold down my right control button, so with anti-lag plus off, it's reporting um, 60 milliseconds, like 59 milliseconds of base lag here. And with anti-lag plus on, we're down to 29. The frame gen lag still remaining at around 18 milliseconds. So it does look like anti-lag plus does make up for the difference in the, in the latency on that. So th that's at least pretty interesting there. Anyway, I think this is cool, but again, it, do it, it doesn't work as well as a native FSR 3 implementation, obviously, which does bring up more of a question of, you know, uh, the, the, the image quality artifacting and the fact that it randomly turns off at times uh, versus the increased uh, motion smoothness in scenes that don't have as much fast motion going on. Uh, I'm curious your guys' experience, because again, I can't test this in literally every DX11 and DX12 game, and that's by far the coolest thing about it, is that it is available in any DX11 or DX12 game. And so I'm sure that there are gonna be some games where this absolutely shines, and I'm sure people will find those. I just think that right now it's pretty situational, but it's also really cool, and it's also a tech preview that could get um, better and better. So I'm very much, excited to have this as a thing to play around with, uh, even if I think that I would often choose to uh, maybe keep it off in a lot of the types of games that I would actually be playing. Um, because again, I would oftentimes be playing something with fast camera motion, uh, a first person shooter game, that type of thing. I hope all of you have an excellent day.